Hello everybody and welcome back to Coon Valley Campers. Today we show you how to go from this to this wireless reversing camera from Halo View. So today we're going to be showing you how to install the Halo View MC5111 wireless reversing camera. Now the guys at Halo View got in touch with us because they know that motorhomes, RVs and camper vans are going to need a form of reversing camera. A lot of vans that we know, we build and that customers bring into us don't have actually any rear visibility out the rear doors or very little visibility due to the shape of the actual camper van itself. Installing a reversing camera used to mean you had to run a cable from the screen all the way to the back of the vehicle where you wanted to sight a camera. With today's modern technology, you don't need to do that. You can just install your camera wherever you need it at the back of the vehicle, your screen at the front on the dash or wherever you may want it, and then using wireless technology, they communicate between each other and you have the reversing camera image on the screen without, any, without having to run any cables. So that's what we're gonna go into today. Okay, so a really nice box on it. First thing we're seeing is the user manual for the MC50, for the M5111. And packaged really, really nicely. So the first thing we've got here is a rather tasty little screen. A couple of the control buttons on the front. Got the actual wireless reversing camera there. Really sturdy piece of kit, actually. Nicely powder coated or coated there as well. We have a series of antennas for the license plate camera. I'm going to guess that is for your reversing camera. The rear view camera. And I'm going to guess that is for the screen. First layer of film off. We have the screen and its associated wiring there. One 12 volt cigar lighter lead. An audio type lead, like a 3.5 mil jack. A screen protector for the camera, or a shade for the camera. Some more of the camera wiring, and some further bracketry to make it mounting to your vehicle a lot easier. Super. Before we go ahead and fit the whole system to the vehicle, we wanted to just bench test it first and show you guys how it's actually put together. The first thing we've got is the five inch screen. It's a color screen and what we've discovered is it also has audio on it as well, which is brilliant. To mount it to the dashboard you either, or into the front of the vehicle, you either have a suction cup, much like you find on a phone holder. And the other way you can mount it is with these nicely powder coated metal brackets. So you can use one of two systems to actually mount it to the vehicle. For today's fitting, we're just gonna use the screen mounted suction cup. We have an antenna, which screws right to the top. And that can orientate in 360 and bend pretty much horizontally. The lead, the DC 10 to 32 volt lead will plug into one of only well, the only option here is this lead. Once you orientate the lines, that will just plug in. And then we have the power lead socket. And the option you have for the cab wiring for the screen is this cigar lighter socket. Now, that'll be a 12 volt feed from your cab. And that will very simply plug in here. Now, if you don't want to have that in your cigar lighter, you can actually chop those cables and then wire it directly into a fused 12 volt feed from underneath your dashboard, from wherever you choose to. Um, 
If you aren't entirely happy with cutting and terminating the wires, I suggest you speak to a qualified auto electrician and they can carry out that for you. So you're looking for a 12 volt DC fused feed for this camera. Um, this cigar lighter socket here basically just does away with all the extra wiring you may need to do, but if you've got just the one 12 volt socket in your dash, you don't wanna take it up with your reversing camera. Just a word of note. Now, the reversing camera itself is a really, really nice unit. We've been looking at this and it feels so solidly built and we're very impressed with it really. Um, to adjust the angle of the camera, you've got a really nice feeling mechanism there to hold it in each position. When you wire it to whichever vehicle, um, it actually comes pre-terminated with a rubber bung that fits snugly around the wire. That is super impressive as well. So that will keep the path from inside to outside the vehicle actually waterproof using that bung there. And the third thing that we noticed on this unit itself is the power lead. Not only does it click and lock like a bayonet fitting, like that, but it also has a rubber o-ring in that socket as well. So if this part of the lead is actually outside, they've made um, every attempt to keep that 12 volt DC live feed waterproof. Um, I, don't, I haven't found an IP rating on the actual unit itself yet, um, but to have a bayonet fitting 12 volt lead with an o-ring is uh, very impressive and it just makes this system over and above any other cheap system you might find might find online. And then it comes with two open-ended cables there that you will wire into whichever feed you want to. And what we suggest is the actual live feed for the reverse lamp on the rear of your vehicle. Right, for the purpose of our bench test then, we have set up this screen. And what we have just here, you can see these little leads here is 12 volt DC from a 240 volt AC transformer. We're literally gonna plug it onto here and then you will see that screen come on. So if both leads are on there. I'm gonna press this on button. And there we have it. And what we've done is actually set the camera up. And if you listen to the screen, you can hear the camera's audio as well. And that's how we've wired it up, very simply. It'll be 12 volt from the cab, either via your 12 volt fused source or the cigar lighter. And then at the other end of the vehicle, we've got a 12 volt DC source that in this instance, we'll be taking from the 12 volt DC reverse light bulb. Now we've bench tested the camera. I know you're asking yourselves, what vehicle are you gonna fit it to? Well, I'm glad you've asked, you're very good. This behemoth right here. Now this is a Mercedes Sprinter 412 long wheelbase, four x four single chassis cab truck. And it is colossal, look at the size of it. Now, this belongs to the guys at justescape.com. Have a look for their stuff down below in the comments. It's epic. They've already done one round the world trip in a huge ex-military DAF truck. Now, they're gonna be building this thing. Now, it used to have a tree surgery style body on the back. It was a huge tipper truck. Completely removed that. And it's now gonna have a huge habitational pod on the back. Huge habitational pod on the back means no rear visibility, which is why we've chosen this vehicle to put a reversing camera on it. So a couple of the figures and stats on this thing then. It is six and a half meters long. It's two meters wide. It is rear wheel drive with a transfer box. So selectable four wheel drive and the rear axle has a diff lock in it as well. Um, it's currently got a 70 liter fuel tank, which they're gonna increase into around about 120 liters, something in that range. And yeah, it's basically gonna support the guys that just escaped for a maximum of about four to six weeks at a time with no secondary help. So that's gonna have all the water, all the power, and all the food needed to keep them alive for up to six weeks. What I didn't mention before is that the vehicle itself will be a grand total of about three meters high. The chassis, when there's some weight on it, will be at 800 mil from the floor. And 
the box, the habitation pop box itself will be 2,200 mil. So a grand total of around about three meters um, and with no visibility, they're gonna need a camera. Now, you may have spotted that there already is a camera system on here. Um, that was part of the old setup and we have extra leads hanging around and everything else. And they wanted to get this system wired in now because they don't know exactly where they want the camera sighted. And the beauty of the wireless camera is that you can pretty much put it anywhere on the back of the vehicle and then not need to run the cables all the way through to the front. That's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna go and find a source for the 12 volt feed in the back of this rear light cluster. Okay, that's good. Right, reverse light is this white single core cable with the red stripe and the earth is down as brown. So, brown and black by the looks of it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are going to take our cable, extend it, and then we're gonna re-terminate it back at these lights on the earth, which is this one here, on the earth and on the live. So that will mean that whenever you put the vehicle in reverse, the reverse lights illuminate, the power, sorry, the power is sent to the reverse lights, they illuminate, and it'll also send the power to the reversing camera at the same time. What we've got here then is just some leftover black and red cable I had in our store. We are gonna connect them together and just keep them. We're gonna make our own twin core cable with this cloth electrical tape. Just keeps them bound together, keeps them nice and neat. And it means we can identify them in the future. So as you've just seen me do, we've soldered a new wiring loom onto that. So we've got a single core red, single core black. We've twisted them together, sorry, we've taped them together using the black fabric electrical tape. And then we've soldered the two connections together, heat shrunk the two individual single cores, and then put some heat shrink over the, uh, over the entire lot, basically. Now, what we're gonna do is feed this end of the cable through the back of the rear light cluster, and then we're gonna terminate that onto the reverse light bulb. We've got a single core white cable there with a red stripe. We're, that is the live for the bulb. We're gonna connect it to the live for the camera. So first things first, we're going to pop a bit of heat shrink over there. Gonna use one of our non-insulated terminals with a non-insulated terminal crimp tool. Set that up in the tool there. Make sure they are twisted together and tight. Feed that in there and and there we go. Those two cables are neatly crimped into that terminal. Now that we've got the lead wired into the reverse light, we've actually turned the ignition on, popped the vehicle into reverse and I'm going to test the voltage at the lead now. Now positive is right in the center and the earth is on the edge and that's how you will test that lead. So stick the positive in the center, earth on the outside and it's showing 11.28 there at the moment. No, 11.37. It's just under 12 volt um, but then the vehicle's not running at the moment and this vehicle's been sat for a couple of weeks anyway. So, But we know we're getting voltage when we turn it into reverse. As we said at the beginning of the video, you get plenty of options as to where you mount this screen. Uh, previous installation of a reverse camera was up here. Why, I don't know. Um, that's where they chose to put it. Um, in this instance, we're gonna fit it right next to it just so we can give you a comparison between the old and the new. So again, single su simple suction cup mount, easy for you to say. Um, and then once we put the vehicle in reverse with the ignition on, boom, 
there we go we can see that is a super clear picture and as we've explained before as well there's audio on that feed too so previous camera here new camera with a wireless um, signal on here as well and uh, yeah we'll get the camera in now just so you can see what sort of difference we've got going on Now, we've got both of the cameras, the new and the old system, rigged up at the back and they're basically sitting one on top of the other. And just straight off, straight out the back, you can see that not only is the color a lot clearer, the quality is a lot clearer, and actually the field of vision coming out the lenses is, is incredible too. On this one on the right, you can see as far left as the edge of the ladder that's hanging on the wall, and you can see as far right as the actual um, other side of the door frame here. On this one, you can only just catch the edge of the broom on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, you can only see half the door. So although the cameras are in exactly the same place, the field of vision is so much better, and the, the clarity in there too. We're really impressed with it, actually, um, and the fact that you can hook up other cameras to it as well. You can have more than one camera on here. Um, really, really happy with the kit all in. I hope you like it too. Thank you everybody for watching our latest video. We hope you enjoyed it. We certainly enjoyed making it for you. If you're interested to see more Leisure Electrics and wiring for camper vans, be sure to click on this video here to show you what wiring you might need. And if you click on this video here, you'll learn more about split charge wiring. Thank you very much and we'll see you next time.